And we're back on this Friday night, and now it's time for a live interview via Zoom. We're going to speak with Maria Salandi Brown, the director of the NGC Bocas Lit Fest. Ms. Brown, thank you for joining us tonight here on TV6. And, you know, of course, I know next weekend uh, there's going to be a, a virtual festival. Tell us about that. What's happening next weekend? Well, you know that, good evening, you know that the annual literary festival is usually a live event at the National Library and Old Fire Station. And it's normally five days long and it's, we turn it into a festival village. Um, people come from abroad, I mean, people come from all over the country. Uh, you know, thousands of people turn up over the, over the period. But of course, with the health protocols, we're not allowed to do that this year. So at the last minute, we've, we've done this fashionable thing of pivoting and now we've become a virtual festival and it's going to run for three days. I can tell you if anybody's actually been doing virtual stuff, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, in many ways, it's much, much harder than doing physical things. A lot of, there's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of depending on technical output and technicians in ways that we haven't worked before. So we've been actually been doing some pre-recordings. We've been making videos. Everything has been timed. It's actually like running um, a TV station, really, <laughs> a, a, a series of TV programs over the three days. We start on Friday at um, lunchtime, and we end late on Friday evening, and we are back there again on on Saturday, and um, we're there till late in the evening again, and then on Sunday from ten thirty until about nine or so and we are going to be bringing people who tune in i'm not sure what they call them viewers or readers mm -hmm. but certainly <laughs> the people interested in ideas because our tagline really is a festival of words stories and ideas so it's about people who really want to engage their minds in things that happen in books things that things that people are interested in writing about, but also things that actually engage the public in a general way that happen to turn up in books. So on the Friday, we're going to have some incredible writers of fiction, of science fiction, or what we call speculative fiction. And um, you start thinking Game of Thrones and things like that. But what is interesting about science fiction, which I never was a great lover of science fiction, is that it really is about <laughs> a strange reality, the sort of strange reality we're living through now at the moment. And we have um, a cast of really fantastic writers, some of the best Caribbean writers of speculative fiction. And we're asking them to talk about, um, you know, where COVID has landed us and where they see the Caribbean, you know, in the future after the fallout. And it's really quite interesting that these people's minds are not these writers' minds are, are like political minds. Um, I remember reading something by Marsha Pierce, who's a, um, an art critic and an academic and an intellectual at UWE, who was actually saying that, you know, um, the government should really employ the minds of artists um, in their planning, you know, the economic committee that was um, just reported, for example. That, uh, that writers are not people on the margins, writers are really people in the heart of everything. And that is carried through the next two days of the festival, where we look back at, not so much look back, but use the 1970 uprising as a launching point, a point of departure for discussion about what's happened between then and now. And we've asked commissioned writers to write, to, com to do new writing on all of that. Um, we've got on the Sunday morning, we pick up the political theme again with um, former Jamaican Prime Minister PJ Patterson, who's actually written his book um, about his political journey. And he's joined by a former Attorney General of Belize, who's written a book about the assassination of Maurice Bishop. And we've got Professor Andy Knight, who used to be at UWE at St. Augustine, um, actually chairing that, that with a woman from um, Guyana, who's an academic and a writer on Guyanese affairs. So that's repeated through, you know, the, it's a very political, a very political um, uh, festival in a way. It was not our intention because we just, you know, we pick things that are happening and that's what writers are doing. They're writing about the now. 
Now, an, an interesting point you mentioned because I view writers uh, similarly to, to Calypsonians. So if they're commenting on whether it's happening with politics uh, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic, it will be interesting to hear what they come up with, to see and hear what they come up with uh, talking about the pandemic and even the recent uh, you know, election that took place. Uh, now well, this you know, year, we're actually going to have an extempo debate. Sure, um, by every year, one of the most favorite things we do is an extempo debate between usually Black Sage and Brian London, two former champions. Actually, I think Brian London is a, is a reigning monarch, an extempo monarch. And they every year do a debate that comes off one of these political discussions, which are actually anchored in books. You know, they're not just things we plucked out of the, of the air. And of course, this is the 10th year of the festival, am I correct? And tell yes. us how, how has this festival grown uh, over the past decade? How has you, how have you, what have you seen so far? Well, um, it, all, it sounds like if one's blowing one's own trumpet, but <laughs> it is, I mean, we're still staggered by, by what we've been able to create because when we started, we, it was very much trying to prove to people that people read and that people write and people said, you're crazy you know, when you want to start a festival, a literary festival, people in Trinidad don't, wouldn't do that. You know, they don't read in Trinidad. It's not true. Thousands of people are reading. And in fact, what the festival did is actually allowed people to put up their hand and say, you know, I actually read books, you know, and we've actually made it, made it we've turned it cool in a way to read books. Uh, a bookshop um, at the Hotel Normandy called Paperbase, the owner was telling me that she sold dozens and dozens and dozens of copies. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not exaggerating here, of books by new Caribbean writers, first, first time Trinidadian writers. And she sold out her books and she has to keep, you know, she actually has to keep um, ordering and reordering. And that there are young men coming in and buying books. So, and they're younger and younger. So it looks like where we started in 10 years ago is not where we are now. It's, it's okay to read. It's okay to say, you know, I like reading. And one of the things we've been doing over the 10 years is actually we've been working. The festival isn't, it's just like the shop front for what we do. What we've actually been doing is campaigning and working behind the scenes to improve the teaching of, of literature in schools. A lot of people, um, I wouldn't put you on the spot by asking you what was the last book you read. But you see, a lot of <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> a lot of people say, oh, I read that when I was at school and I loved it, but you know, I've never found time for reading again. And it's because of the way we've been taught to, we haven't been taught reading to enjoy it for pleasure. We very much associated with passing exams and the text you study for an exam. And, you know, we tend to take the pleasure out of it. So our campaign is really, was really about getting books back into, you know, into people's psyches. And that really worked um, because of prizes. The prizes, um, the, um, OCM, has, you know, was instrumental um, in creating what is now the most prestigious prize for Caribbean writing, the OCM Bookers Prize. And over the 10 years, we've shortlisted dozens of books. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of books have been entered. And we've had 10 winners, including Derek Walcott, uh, Loveless, Moni Groffey, you name, you know, Marlon James as well. And then we've got category winners. And, and because we've had the prize, Caribbean writers from everywhere in the world have flocked here because there's no other prize of this of the size and of the prestige of the prize that we offer. So that's been really important. And we've also been running programs and prizes for new writers. So many of the new writers who come through have all attended our programs, um, you know, our writing workshops and stuff that we've offered, we've, you know, that we've been offering over the years and working in schools with children. We have a children's program, working with young children, um, getting them to tell stories, collecting their stories, publishing their stories, and then putting their names in the book where they can see themselves as writers, giving them back the books. And some of these people now turn up at the festival, you know, and they, they want to write. So it's been, it's been really a root and branch that, um, project that we've been engaged in for the 10 years. And, you know, the, the writing is what has come out of it. The books, the prizes, so many of our writers are now, you know, writing um, and winning international prizes. Um, 
publishers and agents come to the festival looking for talent. So it's been, it's the yeah, it's been a lot that's been achieved in those ten years. It's just grown beyond our wildest dreams, really. Ms. Solani Brown, you're very passionate about the Bocas Lit Fest. We're out of time, but quickly in about 30 seconds before my producer goes crazy in my ear, uh, tell people watching and listening how they can tune into this festival next weekend. Okay, it starts on Friday 18th, it ends on the 20th, and you just go onto our website, which is Bocas, spelled B O C A S, BocasLitFest.com, um, or you can go onto youtube.com slash Bocas Lit Fest, or on Facebook dot com slash dot com and there won't be any pauses in between the events there are 18 events 80 participants with lots of stuff in between so it's non-stop from friday to sunday and it's free Oh, Trinidadians like that word. Trinbigonians like that word, free. So I saved happy to it log for in. last. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight and telling us about it. And of course, next weekend, I will be tuning in as well to see what's happening with that. And then you need to buy some books, okay? Of course, yes. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.